Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today we're talking Luminar Technologies, ticker symbol LAZR. As a disclaimer, this is not investment advice. This is just a research video that I put together meant to be educational as well as entertaining. We're going to take a quick look at a few different news clippings and articles surrounding the company as of recently. Then we're going to take a look at the stock. Thank you for your time. Please hit that notification bell, like, share, and subscribe. It really helps people find my content. Please enjoy. Luminar. What's Luminar, you ask? Oh, they're the autonomous technology company. Which might make you think of one of these. Or those. Or something like that. Where you gotta do this, and you can't really do that. And you were hoping for this. Speed control and guidance become automatic with the flick of an instrument. But it's really more like... Trust the system. Trust the system. No. Trust that. The system. That's why Luminar rethought the entire drive for you thing. And is, finally, powering true hands-off and eyes-off autonomy. But to do this and fit it seamlessly into your car required some pretty serious engineering from the chip level up. Because to be truly safe, it needs to see more and to know what it's seeing. To instantly understand what objects are and where they're going in any direction. It gives your vehicle more time to react. Oh, and Luminar's autonomous software is built for the future, which all adds up to one thing safety. That's why people are noticing. Especially people who care about safety. Like they really care about it. So now that you've met Luminar, get ready for real autonomy. What kind of moat do you have around this technology patents and the like, at some point, do, does the technology that you're building, does it become commoditized? Do others figure out how to do it and do it just as well? You, you yeah. often have that in sort of, you know, consumer products, effectively. Yeah. I know this, uh, I don't know if you put yourself as a consumer product, but to some <laughs> degree it becomes one. I, I, absolutely, there's no, there's no question uh, that, that a lot of products historically, particularly even in the hardware space, and this is why a lot of hardware products are associated with commodities. But but for this, it's just it's dramatically different. You have to wonder why. Okay, why the Mobileyes or the Nvidia's of this world, you know, never become commoditized, you know, over the source? And it just really comes down to very high IP. And there's a host of different reasons. We have pretty much one of the most insane moats, probably out of out of any company, um, you know, at, at, at this stage. And really, we we've actually built out, uh, for example, talk about. IP, um, you know, we, we, and, and everything about the core technology. I mean, we've pioneered all these different core components and building it entirely from the ground up. We're not using off-the-shelf parts and commodity parts like other people have historically. And this is the whole point of how we're able to solve the problem, how we're able to solve the technology, the performance, the safety, the economics. And we have the largest patent portfolio in the industry for the for the sensing systems. That actually more than the other, you know, top right. five, uh, you know, LIDAR uh, R&D efforts combined here as part of uh, the overall portfolio. And on top of that, you know, have the world supply, the relevant team. We've locked up the key exclusives and even uh, actually acquired some of the relevant suppliers, the only ones in the world that can do some of these things. So we're right. feeling really great. It's always good to see and read and listen to an article involving the CEO of a company that I'm researching. It helps me wrap my head around the vision. Let's take a look at this article. Daimler invests in LiDAR startup to bolster self-driving truck effort. Article came out in late October. Daimler plans to use technology from Luminar, which makes laser-based sensors that allow a vehicle to see its surroundings for its in-house effort to develop automated heavy-duty trucks. So, Daimler is a very nice company. We're going to take a look at it a little bit in just a moment, but let's continue on. LiDAR maker Luminar said Friday it plans to complete its $3.4 billion merger with special purpose acquisition company Gore's Metropolis and go public in early December. And shares of Gore's were a little change at $10, and Daimler was up uh, around 1% to $51. Okay, so again, this article came out in October. Okay, so I want to take a quick look at Daimler stock just to wrap my head around what the deal 
means. And the article came out around October, and we see how the price has since just taken off from the 50s to the 70s. Daimler is a pretty gnarly company. Uh, develops and manufactures passenger cars, trucks, vans, buses in Germany and internationally. It operates through Mercedes-Benz, Daimler trucks. Daimler's a beaster of a company. I mean, let's just take a look at, at that revenue, those estimates for this year, even in a down year. Over $180 billion is the estimate. Next year, it's looking to even grow and rebound. And I think moving forward... It's to say, it's just safe to say. I mean, it has a nice dividend. Daimler is a very nice company, in my opinion. So, not to shed away from any other news, but if Daimler is inking deals and contracts with Luminar, then I see Luminar as a great hold, a great opportunity of a company. So. Let's let's move on. Let's continue. I just want to shed some light on Daimler. Okay, let's take a look at this article from Forbes. Luminar Inc.'s deal to sell laser sensors to Intel's Mobileye ahead of NASDAQ listing. This article came out in November. I'm not going to go through the entire article. I just want to shed light on just a few important topics. I'll leave everything in the show notes, so help yourself to it. Created and led by 25-year-old optics prodigy Austin Russell, Luminar signed a deal to supply an unspecified number of the optical sensor sensors for Mobileye's next-generation driverless system. Mobileye, supplier of camera-based chips and software to the global auto industry that Intel bought in 2017, has relied mainly on digital cameras as the primary vision source for its autonomous vehicle architecture. It will work with Palo Alto-based Luminar to integrate LiDAR, into a so-called Level 4 autonomous fleet that will operate in Tel Aviv, Dubai, Paris, the Zhao City, South Korea. So I think it's important to take away from this article that when Luminar is inking deals like this ahead of its IPO, which was in early December, that a lot of big players, a lot of big names are trying to acquire the services of Luminar. So I just see it as a positive thing. Regardless of, and we're going to take a look at what analysts talk about the LiDAR space. And I get it. This type of technology, this type of company, it can be speculative because we don't know where it's at. But traction is starting to to tend in the autonomous driving autonomous vehicle way with apple signing and talking about uh, creating its uh, its type of ev autonomous cars in 2025 a lot of these types of companies are look to profit from any other big named company that tries to get its hands on the type of technology that luminar provides okay so i just wanted to shed light on this article let's move on Okay, let's take a quick look at this article from Tip Ranks. Luminar stock could stay grounded for now. And this article came out December 23rd. And I'm not going to go through the entire article. The analyst covering Luminar also touches a little bit on the, the space of LiDAR detection and LiDAR companies and kind of just sees more or less that it's uh, Luminar right here as a pure play in solid state LiDARs. The analyst is uh, Hedda or Jera uh, argues that the company's products already have some utility in cars driving at the L0 to L2 levels of autonomy. Luminar's uh, shares will become particularly well suited. And I think it's safe to say as we move along here, uh, like the stock is just trying to find its legs. I'm going to jump into the chart in just a moment, but I just wanted to shed some light whenever an author or an analyst or somebody covering the company uh, and gives their recommendation. And it just kind of talks a little bit about the shares and the price movement and what it's really worth. And so I'll leave this in the show notes, but let's just... My takeaway is that we don't know what the company is going to do. It touches a little bit on Velodyne LiDAR as it's as the market leader. And right here, uh, ultimately, these unknowns force the analysts to conclude that despite its potential, Luminar is only a speculative investment at present and not worth more than a neutral rating at present. 
To this end, the analyst gives the stock a $30 price target, which implies a 20% downside from Tuesday's closing price. So I'll leave it here. We'll take a look at the stock. I just wanted to shed some light that, yes, this type of company is speculative. However, if you believe that moving forward with some of the contracts that Luminar has inked, moving forward, it's going to be a big grower, a big performer. And at its price where it's at, you can wait for a little bit of a pullback. But let's take a look at the stock. Okay, so we are on my trading view, the trading window for Luminar Technologies. So the chart's going to get a little, I'm going to do my best to keep it as neat and clean as possible. So let's play out a few different scenarios. Okay, I'm going to draw a line of support at the around the $30 mark. Let's take the analyst's recommendation, their price target for it. Let's just let's just play the play out this example. So let's just say that is a level of support. It had traded there previously uh, after the IPO, it kind of found a little bit of a level around $30. It had since popped well over that mark and now trading where it's currently at, we're going to try to find some legs for the stock. So again, I think that it's safe to say from the time that it started trading that a lot of investors were trying to get in on it. And I think with the Apple news and some of the movement in the electric vehicle names, we can kind of see that around the $30 level isn't completely, you know, insane to think that it can trade there again. It had traded there previously for a short amount of time, but still nonetheless. So let's try to find some levels of support around the $24 range, the $26 range, and again, around the $30 range. So I wouldn't be surprised that after it surges that it tries to find a level of support. So let's just play it out. Here, this scenario that it touches the $30 range and then it trades below then. I see it as a great buying opportunity to pick up shares below the $30 mark, of course. And that 36, 37, the high 30s becomes a new level of resistance. In my opinion, I think that is a safe kind of uh, a moving average to kind of pay attention to moving forward. I'll keep an eye on a 10-day moving average. For this company and kind of see where it trades now let's play out a different scenario so if the stock just takes off right let's just say and it can anything can happen we don't know what it's going to do it just takes off and we find that it stays above a certain trend line or that it drops and it never rebounds and it, it just kind of stays at a level of support my what my opinion what i plan to do for this type of company is that be patient with it if it drops below a certain price and it finds a level of support in the in the mid 20s i think that's great if you believe that this type of company is going to be valued a lot higher a multiple of a 10 bagger or a 20 bagger then it's it's not relative uh, to think or it's not completely uh irresponsible to think that it's going to trade a certain way or another, right? You just kind of have to react with it. So let's let's create sort of a a different type of a trend that if it starts to find a bottom and a and a higher highs and higher lows type of technical moves with this company, then I can see that the price can maybe find a nice trend line and trade either above or below or right on it near it and here we see let's just say play it out that it drops below that and it kind of finds that level of resistance and it's kind of hard to move ab above it it's just going to take some time to get there so we're gonna have to keep an eye on some of the earnings and some of the contracts and deals that it makes with some of their clients and customers so moving forward i think that it's safe to say that we could then maybe move out the trend line and calculate a bottom for levels of support moving forward, creating higher lows in the future. 
and then establish some some nice moving averages and then kind of just play it like that. And again, anything can happen, but this is just what I take from it. Again, anything can happen, but these are just a few different scenarios. Okay, I want to thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. It really helps out the channel. It helps other people find my content. Hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. On to 2021. Let's knock out 2020. If there's another company, ETF, or IPO that you'd like to see me research, just drop it in the comment section below. I hope everyone has a great week moving forward. Until the next video, I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.